If you are at the bleeding edge of classic gaming, then you've heard of Mister, the open source FPGA based emulation platform based on the fundamental goal of hardware accuracy. Mister already has tons of cores spanning 8 to 32 bit consoles, home computers, arcade games, and more. In this series, I'll feature one FPGA core every day for the next 21 days to ring in the new year. And the next core in my Mr. New Year's Core Countdown is the Apple II Plus Core. Originally written by Stephen A. Edwards of Columbia University as a Christmas present to himself in 2007, he programmed the core in VHDL to run on an older Altera DE2 FPGA dev board. And this core was ported to the Mist FPGA by W. Saltis, Till, and Giarco. And it was finally ported to Mr. by Sorgelig or Alexei Melkinov, the man behind the Mr. Project, and he went and upgraded the hardware specs to the Apple IIe. So it's basically a fully decked out and upgraded Apple II, with all the capabilities up to the Apple IIe. A lot of people grew up with an Apple II, or they had them in schools. I'm pretty sure I remember them, but it, I was just so young back then, it's hard for me to remember. All I know is that nowadays, it doesn't really strike me as being very graphically impressive, and the audio is pretty lacking as well. These were the kind of games where you played them because you wanted to play a video game and you wanted it to be good. Or maybe your teacher allowed you to play it in some time off from class or as a special activity. A lot of the games seem to be set up for serial play, where one player would play through and then it takes you right back to the beginning to enter a new name for the next player, which would make a lot of sense for the classroom. Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego is one of those games. And you can also play Where in Europe is Carmen Sandiego, or where in the USA is Carmen Sandiego. I remember liking this game growing up, but it just doesn't seem to have aged very well, and it's very slow paced. There are a lot of text-based games where you're given a screen with a sort of set of instructions that you can carry out, and it plays sort of like an interactive picture book. Maniac Mansion is one that a lot of people are fond of. There are also some interesting arcade ports. There's a barely recognizable version of Dig Dug that just looks and sounds awful. Zaxxon is here as well. A slightly better port than Dig Dug, but still not exactly arcade quality. How about some Super Mario Brothers? Or maybe not. And Lemonade Stand, everybody's favorite old game that takes a simple scenario and makes a complex game out of it. And I think the one game that sums up the Apple II is Oregon Trail, and still stands up today to some degree, I think, although it was a lot more fun with friends. A classic game that's extremely simplistic, but somehow manages to keep your attention on the trail for an hour. You have to hunt animals to maintain your food, like Red Dead Redemption, manage your supplies, watch your team's health, and guide your wagon west as you try to generally just not die a horrible death. And now that I think about it, maybe this is one of the most historically accurate games ever made. It's just incredibly somber, everyone's always dying of some horrible disease, or starvation, drowning, breaking limbs, running out of clothing, just like in real life. Just firing this game up brought back a lot of memories for me. It's still a great game, and it's a great reason to check out the Apple II Core. If you grew up in the 80s or early 90s, you surely played this game with friends, either at school or at your lucky friend's house. I clearly remember getting to play one or two games of word or number munchers in my classrooms. We must have had old computers hanging out back then, because these games already had quite a few years on them by the time I played them. It's a learning game, disguises entertainment, with cheesy cutscenes. What else can you say about it?
and check out this bubble bobble. And Wolfenstein is here, although it's not quite what you expect. There's just a downright incredible version of Choplifter, though, that seems to do things that no other game does on the Apple II. This one's really impressive. There's also an intriguing ALF game, based on the television show ALF, where it seems like the point is to catch the delicious cats that are running around, but I just can't seem to get him to eat them. I don't know what the giant head is, and I just keep getting hit by cars. So there you have it, maybe a trip down memory lane for a lot of you. If you're playing two disc games, remember to load up the second disc at the prompt. By loading the file, you're essentially loading another disc into the system. And if you want to switch between games, you insert a disc and then do a cold reset for the system, just like you would on a real Apple II. Alright, stay tuned for the next core tomorrow as my New Year's core countdown continues. This video represents a snapshot of the core as it exists today, but by the time you're watching this in the future, it may have been improved or expanded with new features. Hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the latest Mr. Happenings, and ring the bell to be notified when I go live for a stream. If you like the channel, consider supporting it. Patreon support at any level gets you an instant invite to the Smoke Monster Elite Discord and early access to my videos. Thank you so much for your support, I really appreciate it.